day, dear students. In today's lesson, we will be covering Oxford Progressive English, page number 156, 157, 158. And our topic is pronouns, reflective, emphatic, reciprocal, and indefinite. Let's see what pronouns are. Pronouns are words that take the place of nouns. We often use them to avoid repeating the nouns that they refer to. Pronouns have different forms for the different ways we use them. Reflexive pronouns. The reflexive pronouns are singular, myself, yourself, himself, herself, and itself. And for the plurals, ourselves, yourselves, themselves. We use a reflexive pronoun as a direct object when the object is the same as the subject of the verb. For example, I fell over and hurt myself. I, direct object, myself. Myself is the reflexive pronoun. Be careful with that knife. You might cut yourself. We can use the reflexive pronoun as a direct object, object with most transitive verbs, but these are the most common. Amuse, blame, cut, dry, enjoy, help, hurt, introduce, kill, prepare, satisfy, and teach. Below is a little exercise to check your understanding of reflexive pronouns. Now, be careful. We do not use a reflexive pronoun after verbs which describe things people usually do for themselves. He washed in cold water. We will not say himself. He washed in cold water. He always shaved before going out in the evening. Michael dressed and got ready for the party. We only use reflexive with these verbs for emphasis. He dressed himself in spite of his injuries. She's old enough to wash herself. We use reflexive pronoun as an indirect object when the indirect object is the same as the subject of the verb. Would you like to pour yourself a drink? We've bought ourselves something to eat. We use reflexive pronouns as the object of a preposition when the object is the same as the subject of the verb. They had to cook for themselves. For is the preposition added here before the reflexive pronoun. He was feeling very sorry for himself. Again, for is the preposition added before himself, which is the object of the sentence. But we use object pronouns, not reflexes, reflexives, after preposition of place. He had a suitcase beside him. As you can see, beside is the preposition of place. So we are not using himself, but simple pronoun him. And then again, after with when it means accompanied by. She had a few friends with her. We are not using herself because here the word with means accompanied by. We use reflexive with the preposition by to show that someone did something without any help. The children got dressed by themselves. I prepared the whole meal by myself. And again, we use reflexives with the preposition by to show that someone was alone. He lived by himself in an enormous house. She walked home by herself. We use reflexive pronouns intensively to emphasize the person or thing we are referring to. This way, the pronoun will be called the emphatic pronoun. Candle itself 
is quite a small town. We are emphasizing that Kendall is a small town. The emphasis is on the town of Kendall. Especially if we are talking about someone very famous. Sir Paul McCartney himself sang the final song. We often put the reflexive pronoun at the end of the clause when we are using it intensively for emphasis. I baked the bread myself. She mended the car herself. Below are given two more exercises to check your understanding of reflexive and emphatic pronouns. Now, some verbs change their meaning slightly when they have a reflexive pronoun as direct object. Would you like to help yourself to another drink? That is, would you like to take another drink? I wish the children would behave themselves. I wish the children would behave well. He found himself lying by the side of the road. He was surprised when he realized that he was lying by the side of the road. I saw myself as a famous actor. I imagined that I was a famous actor. She applied herself to the job of mending the lights. She worked very hard to mend the lights. He busied himself in the kitchen. He worked busily in the kitchen. I had to content myself with a few euros. I had to be satisfied with the few euros. Again, two more exercises are given to check your understanding of reflexive pronouns. Reciprocal pronouns. We use the reciprocal pronouns each other and one another when two or more people do the same thing. Peter and Mary helped each other. Peter helped Mary and Mary helped Peter. We sent one another Christmas cards. We sent them a Christmas card and they sent a Christmas card to us. They didn't look at each other. X didn't look at Y and Y didn't look at X. We also use the possessive forms, each other's and one another's. They helped to look after each other's children. The group of students often stayed in one another's houses. Note that we do not use reciprocal pronouns as the subject of a clause. Be careful. Reciprocal pronouns and plural reflexive pronouns, ourselves, yourselves, themselves have different meanings. John and Fred talked to each other regularly. John talks to Fred and Fred talks to John. John and Fred regularly talk to themselves. John talks to himself and Fred talks to himself. Below is an exercise to check your understanding of the lesson. Indefinite pronouns. Some of the indefinite pronouns in English are anybody, anyone, anything, everybody, everyone, everything, nobody, no one, nothing, somebody, someone, something. We use indefinite pronouns to refer to people or things without saying exactly who or what they are. We use pronouns ending in buddy or one for people and pronouns ending in thing for things. Everybody enjoyed the concert. I opened the door, but there was no one at home. It was a very clear day. We could see everything. Below is an exercise to check your understanding of the basic indefinite pronouns. Now, we use a singular verb after an indefinite pronoun. Everybody loves Sally. Everything was ready for the party. As you can see, singular verb has been used after the indefinite pronoun everybody and everything. Now, when we refer back to an indefinite pronoun, we normally use a plural pronoun. 
Everybody enjoyed the concert. They stood up and clapped. I will tell somebody that dinner is ready. They have been waiting a long time. Now be careful. In negative clauses, we use pronoun with no, not pronouns with any. Nobody came home, not anybody didn't come. We do not use another negative in a clause with nobody, no one or nothing. Nobody came, not nobody didn't come. Nothing happened. And we're not going to say nothing didn't happen. Solve indefinite pronouns exercise two for better understanding. Now, finally, we can add S. We can add apostrophe S to an indefinite pronoun to make a possessive. They were staying in somebody's house. Is this anybody's coat? We use else after indefinite pronouns to refer to other people or things. All the family came, but no one else. If Michael can't come, we'll ask somebody else. I think this is somebody else's coat. Thank you for listening.